P-O-S-T. P-O-S-T. Post, the serials you like the most, brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's roundup time on the double R bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna ride far. The double R bar ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills, the wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis, the Queen of the West, Dale Evans, and in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. <laughs> Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Buckaroos, I'm speaking again for Post Cereals. And I'm mighty proud to do so because Post Cereals are good. And you can count on anything bearing the brand name Post. So get your mom to put them on the shelf and try them as a favor to me, will you? Well, my old sidekick Jonah Wilde and I were going to take a ride across country today to give my dog Bullet a workout. But that may have to be postponed because trouble has hit Paradise Valley. Doug! Oh, Doug! Any of you men know where Doug Birch is? Sure, I am, sure. I heard you'd started your cattle drive today, Doug. Thought I'd catch up and see if I could be of any help. Well, thanks, Sheriff, but I think you'll be okay. Uh, does that mean you've changed your mind and decided to sell through Jake Gullick? No, sir, it does not. Jake Gollick is working an out-and-out skin game. Jake or nobody else is going to pay me $5 a hundred less in market price. I don't fall for the phony stories about the special service he gives, and I don't fall for threats, neither. Has Gollick threatened you? Not directly. But every other rancher who's refused to sell through Jake has had his cattle stampeded and his riders shot up. Yeah. Gollick's too smart to make an open threat, providing he is the man behind these raids. Yeah, he's the man, all right. But my boys are packing guns today, Sheriff, and they know how to use them. Good work, Doug. I'll stick with you, and if the outlaws strike this time, we may have a chance of taking them. All day, the cattle are driven forward. At night, the riders push them harder than ever, for night is the time when an attack can be made most easily. By 10 o'clock, the herd is at the edge of the valley, just opposite the Double R Bar Ranch. The mountains ahead loom large and black in the moonlight. Doug! Hmm? Better turn the cattle off the trail and over toward the creek. Turn them off? Right now, Doug. Look up there. Where? I don't... There. In the space between those two mountain peaks. Riders. Men on horseback, silhouetted in the moonlight. Dark figures. Ten of them sit motionless, looking down at the herd below. One man stands in the lead. He raises an arm silently. He puts his spurs to his horse and starts down towards the herd. The other riders follow. Without caution, without regard for either themselves or their horses. Down the side of the steep boulder strewn mountain at a full gallop. Only the sound of the flying hoofs is heard. The hoofbeats grow louder, louder, louder as the horses come nearer. They ride in on the herd. Got away! Every man of them got away! Cattle stampeded. Two of my men wounded. Sheriff, there was just too many of them. We never had a chance. I didn't get a look at them. Even now, I couldn't swear they were Jake Gollick's riders. Yeah, there must be more to this than Jake Gollick. He's only been here a couple of months. How could a stranger organize a band like this in such a short space? Listen! Yeah. Yeah, I hear it too. Somebody else is heading this way. Two horses appear on the trail. Not those of night riders now. These horses are ridden by Roy Rogers and Chona Wilde. The sound of the stampede and shooting was carried across the valley to the Double R Bar Ranch. Roy and Jonah, knowing that night riders have been preying on herds, lost no time in getting into the saddle and riding toward the sound of the battle. Whoa, 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 Trigger. Whoa, whoa, tiny boy, whoa. That's you, Sheriff? Roy, we're mighty glad to see you and Jonah. Wait here, Trigger. Is this where the shooting came from? Yeah, hey, it sounded like the Indians had raised up again. Say, it sounded like they'd raised up again. For a minute there, I forgot I'd fought in seven, eight wars since we put the red man down. It was the night riders again, Roy. They raided the cattle I was driving to Squaw Creek. Did you get a look at them, Sheriff? Well, Roy, I'm ashamed to admit we didn't. They're too well organized. Well, Jake Gullick's been under suspicion ever since these raids started. I think it's about time somebody paid him a visit. Better be careful, Roy. You help Doug take care of his men. 
Jonah, we'll ride up to Mineral City. Golic is staying at Dale's hotel. We'll face him and find out once and for all whether or not he's connected with this rotten business. <laughs> Howdy, Dale. Hi, Roy. Jonah. Howdy. What are you two doing in town this time of night? Well, sir, we're on a forced march for the purpose of eliminating the enemy, as General Thomas Kenneth Rowe used to say. Do you know if Jake Golick is in his room, Dale? Yeah, that feller had one of the biggest mouths I've ever seen. Why, I don't think so, Roy. What do you want him for? Is Jonah going to challenge him? Yeah. I mean, who, no, challenge him? Oh, that'd be insubordination. A soldier don't go around challenging the general. Unless he wants Who's to talking buy... about a general? Jonah, Dale was just kidding you. She was talking about Jake Gollick. And uh, Gollick was a boxer before he came here. What, huh? About the only thing I've heard lately is the name of Jake Gollick. And some of the talk makes him out to be a pretty bad hombre. The ranchers here are suspicious of him, that's sure. Yeah, and there's some mystery about his past. I heard a couple of owl hoots discussing him in the lunchroom, and both of them agreed they wouldn't care to meet him unless they were wearing guns. And that's because he's an ex-prize fighter. You know, they intimated he was on the way to becoming heavyweight champion of the world. And then he got into some kind of a scrape and was barred from the ring. Well, General Rowe got barred from O'Keefe's trading post. Well, there's Gollick, it, Roy, it, at the door, coming in. Yeah, they, they caught him dipping dill pickles out of a barrel. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Gollick. Howdy. Great fellow, though. Well, Rogers, seeing you here saves me a trip. I intended writing out to your place tomorrow. Is that so? Well, we dropped in here to see you. All right. Suppose we go to my room. Key, please. You bet. Here you are. I don't like to talk business, any kind of business, unless I have privacy. John Gullick leads the way. A giant of a man, his face battered by fights in and out of the ring. His walk is a shuffle, but muscles in his arms, legs, and shoulders give evidence of tremendous strength. He unlocks his room, then holds the door open for Roy and Jonah. Go ahead. Thanks. Now sit down. Uh, Jake, uh, you an army man? You know, you look like a sergeant I know just before the Battle of Hillaby. Well, Rogers? Bald as a banana. Gollick, just for my own information, do you mind telling us where you spent the evening? At my office across the street. <laughs> you go back and tell Doug Birch and the other ranchers I had nothing to do with those raids. I don't know who's pulling them. I don't care. I got all I can do, tend to my own business. Is that clear? I think so. Anything else? Not a thing. All right. Sorry we bothered you. Come on, Jonah. Uh -huh. Yeah, You know, this fellow would be put on bread and water if he talked to General Rowe that way. Hey, Rogers. Well? I guess you forgot I said there was something I wanted to see you about, too. Yeah, that's right. You did. What's on your mind? Uh, I'd like to buy that dog of yours. Bullet? You want me to sell Bullet? I like him. I want him. Thanks, Gullick. But that dog isn't for sale. Okay. But if you ever decide to sell, let me know. I'll meet any offer you get. Thanks. I'll remember. No hard feelings about that other matter? Why would there be? See you later, Gullick. Something about that fella I don't like. Jonah, head for the stables behind the hotel. Gollick's our man. I'm almost sure we'll find something in the stables to prove it. Steady, boy. Take it easy. This is Gollick's horse, Jonah. Put your hand here on his neck. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, this horse been rode hard. He's all lathered up. Yeah, and Gullick told us he'd spent the evening in his office across the street. Kind of forgetful, ain't he? Yeah, the saddle blanket's wet, too. Well, he might have been riding off somewhere else, Roy. He didn't have to be on the raid. If he was off somewhere else, he wouldn't have known about the raid, Jonah. You and I, and maybe the raiders themselves, are the only ones who've come to town since it happened. Yet Gullick knows about it. He mentioned Doug Birch's name. <laughs> Roy, you're a deducer. We know who we're after now for sure. All we have to do is bait the trap and catch the rattler. That shouldn't take long, but it may be dangerous. 
Here's exciting news for all you buckaroos. It's news of that thrilling and popular club, the Roy Rogers Writers Club. I know each and every one of you will want to join up right away. Why, maybe you'll be one of the very first official members from your neighborhood. Now, in just a little while, Roy himself is going to tell you all about what his Roy Rogers Writers Club stands for and how much fun it is to belong. You'll find out, too, how easy it is for you to join. So, get your pencil and paper and be ready for the big news right after we hear the rest of our exciting adventure. Roy has learned the name of the man responsible for the raids against cattle being driven to market. For weeks, signs have pointed to Jake Golick, a battered ex-heavyweight prize fighter who was barred from the ring and came west to set up as a cattle buyer and who tried to force ranchers to market their cattle through him. Golick is guilty. Roy is sure of that. Roy and Jonah leave the stable, go into the Eureka again to see Dale. Draw shavers. Prepare to charge. Take it easy, Jonah. Dale, Golick lied to us, and his lies gave us the proof we needed. Yeah, we'll be celebrating a victory before the night's over. Roy, don't go after Golick yet. There's, there's something I haven't told you about him, something you should know. Well? Well, Golly killed a man, Roy. That's the reason he was barred from the ring. Well, why would that keep us from going after him? Well, he fouled a man during a fight, and the man died. Golly can hit hard enough to kill. Yeah, well, now, ain't that a situation? I'm afraid we'll have to keep our guards up then, Dale, because we can't afford to have his kind running loose. But how do you know he's involved in the raids on our cattle, Roy? Well, he lied to us. He said he spent the evening over at his office, but Joan and I checked his horse. The horse was lathered and the saddle blanket wet. Furthermore, Golick knew about tonight's raid, and there's no way he could have found out about it this soon unless he'd been there himself. That looks bad, Roy. It is bad. And the worst part is we haven't got any real proof. We'll have to catch him red-handed on a raid if we want to make these charges stick. Well, is there anything I can do to help? Yeah. He wants to buy a bullet, so when he comes down in the morning, I'd like you to take him aside and tell him you might be able to persuade me to sell my dog. You'll never sell Bullet. No, but I might loan him for a few days while Gullick decides how much he's worth. Yeah, we're, uh, we're baiting a trap, you see, Dale. I say we're baiting a trap. Oh, so that's it. Roy, Bullet will do pretty much what you want him to do, won't he? Well, I'm counting on him, Dale. And, too, I'm counting on the fact that Bullet and Trigger are good friends. I kind of think we'll take Mr. Gullick so fast, he'll never know what happened. <laughs> Dale does her part well. The next afternoon, Jake Gollick appears at the Double R Bar Ranch and borrows Bullet. He takes the dog into town, stops at the Eureka to thank Dale, and Dale follows Roy's instructions on another matter. Her voice and her manner are casual, calm. I'm awfully glad Roy let you take Bullet, Mr. Gollick. Oh, oh, I meant to ask you if you'd heard about Charlie Fisher. Fisher? What about Fisher? Well, I hate to be the one to give you the bad news, but... Did you know he decided not to sell his cattle through your office, after all? Well, you're mistaken. I talked to Fisher yesterday. Well, he's changed his mind since yesterday. He stopped by here this morning and, well, he wanted to know where he could hire riders to drive his cattle to Squaw Creek. Oh, he did, huh? Yes, he started his drive this morning. I suppose I really should keep quiet about it for fear his herd might be raided like the other ranchers. Thanks, Miss Evans. Thanks for letting me know. Too bad Fisher didn't see fit to do business with my office. Golic walks away. As soon as he's out of sight, Dale gets on her horse, rides out to find Roy. He's at the ranch, waiting. The sheriff and a posse are there with him. Everything's all set, Roy. Golic fell for the trick just as you said he would. Easy, buttermilk. Whoa. All right, I'll tell Charlie Fisher and he can start the cattle moving. You're really going to do it, Roy? Sure. Have Charlie drive his cattle through, knowing there'll be a raid? If anything should go wrong... Nothing will go wrong, Dale. Oh, now, Roy, what do you want to worry the girl for? Why don't you tell her the facts of the case? Say, why don't you tell her? Dale, the ranchers have all got together and agreed to put up enough money so that Charlie be paid in case he suffers any loss. He ain't a-risking a thing on this deal, except his life. Oh, that makes me feel just a whole lot better. Well, we better start riding. Golic's men will have to strike tonight, and we want to be there, ready, when he comes. See anything, 
right. Not yet, Sheriff. Trigger's getting uneasy, though. Steady, fella. Maybe the herd's making him nervous. No, it's something more than that. Yeah, well, all I'm asking is that you let me take Jake Gollick. Now, I'll get him the way General Thomas Kenneth Rowe took Chief Wrinkled Me to the Mohegans. You'd better let us handle Gollick, Jordan. Yeah, General Rowe snuck up on the chief, and he... Uh, what'd you say, Sheriff? I guess the sheriff hasn't heard you fought in seven or eight wars, Jonah. If not, I'm the only one who hasn't. Yes. Well, General Rowe snuck up on the chief. Unarmed he was. Uh, least way so the chief thought. Hmm. Actually, though, the general had a saber stuck down his pant leg. So Don't got you in... ever get tired of this, Roy? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say I I exactly... say he got within two steps of the chief, stuck out his hand in the greeting of friendship, and then he let him... Trigger, see something he... now, Roy, for sure. Yeah. What is it, boy? Uh, what do you see? Not General T.K. Rowe, I hope. There, crossing the divide, straight ahead. Gollick and his band of raiders. Once more, outlaw riders are silhouetted against the moonlit sky. They move steadily across the divide in single file, coming toward the herd. While Roy and his posse wait in a sheltered canyon off to the side, ready for battle. A vast, wild country might be uninhabited for all the sounds that are heard. There is none. Save that made by the cattle and the signs of Trigger's uneasiness. Quiet here, fella. Maybe Trigger sees Bullet and he thinks there's something wrong because his pal is with strangers and not with you. Well, I believe this is going to work, Dale. Everything's going according to plan so far. The riders are coming nearer. They increase the speed of their horses. The atmosphere is tense, strained. Trigger, perhaps sensing that the riders are outlaws and that bullets should not be with them, trembles in excitement, pawing the ground, tossing his head. Oh, sure. What the horse cavalry could have done with a bunch like them. <laughs> Government sure went to pieces when they took away horses and left nothing but smelly trucks. Just stand quiet. Wait until they're a little nearer. Roy, that is Bullet. Yeah, he's running alongside the man in the lead. I hope that man's garlic. But I can't tell for sure yet. He's raising his arm. Yeah, it's a signal to the others. The next few minutes will tell the story. Your men know what to do, Sheriff. The night riders are getting close to the herd, Roy. Trigger, listen to me, fella. That's Bullet out there. <coughs> I want you to call him. Bring Bullet over to us, Trigger. Call to him, fella. Call him. <coughs> Trigger calls to his pal. Bullet answers, tries to dart ahead of the lead horse. The man riding the horse bends down to whip the dog back. Bullet ignores the whip, tries to go on. The man puts spurs to his horse, tries to run down the dog. Bullet wheels about, leaps at the horse. The horse rears. Bullet leaps again. The horse, frightened, takes the bit in his teeth and runs. The man riding cannot hold him. He's running away, leading the whole band of raiders straight toward Roy and the posse. Bullet is ahead of them. Now, riders from the sheriff's posse cut out the herd. Ride up behind the outlaws. The outlaws are being surrounded. All right, pull up your horses and drop your guns. You're covered on all sides. You're surrounded. Ride him down, ride him down. Bullet, right, Bullet, right, it's all right. Here's Trigger. It's the law. We can't let the law take us. Close in there, close in, you men. Keep this gang covered. Wave the flag, boys. Make it fast. Throw down those guns if you want to live. We've got some trigger-happy ranchers in this posse. All I have to do is give the Ready word. Up, now, we'll take our medicine. Don't show up. Yeah, 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 not me. I'm not giving up. And you won't get me. I'm riding right through. Have you got that pencil and paper ready? Well, hold on. Here comes a special surprise for you from Roy Rogers himself. Uh, howdy, friends. This is Roy Rogers. I'm especially pleased to be able to extend a personal invitation to you from Dale, Trigger, and myself. We'd be mighty proud to have you become a member of our Writers Club. Maybe you've heard about our Writers Club already. We've got several million members throughout the country, and our aim is to bring you lots of fun through honesty, loyalty, and friendship. And I'm sure you'll gain a lot of fun being one of our members. Of course, you'll get a beautiful membership card entitling you to all the rights and privileges as a Writers Club member. And you'll get an official badge to wear, too. Here's the big surprise. Every single member gets a big 16-page comic book in full color. This is our official Roy Rogers Writers Club book. 
It's packed with adventure about Dale, Trigger, Bullet, and me. And oh, yes, you'll get a full-color autographed picture of Trigger and me. We'd be mighty proud to have you become a member, and if you'd like to be one, here are the details on how to join. Yes, friends, card, badge, comic book, and picture. All yours when you join the Roy Rogers Writers Club. And to become a member is so easy. Just take the top from one regular size package of any of the swell-tasting Post cereals. Mail the box top with only 10 cents and your name and address to Post, P-O-S-T, Box 7767, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now write that down while you remember it. That's Post, Box 7767, Chicago 77, Illinois. That's all there is to it. Just one Post Serials box top, one dime, your name and address, and you're a member of the Roy Rogers Writers Club. Have fun. Join up today. I'm not giving up. I'm riding right through you. Let's take him, Bullet. Come on, Trigger. Bullet streaks toward Gullick, and Gullick's horse, frightened, rears. Roy follows Bullet, charging down upon Jake. Get out of here! Bullet leaps to the plunging horse. Roy is coming up on the opposite side. Gullick is doing his best to remain in his saddle, but the horse is rearing, bucking, plunging. Gullick loses his seat. Gullick is thrown to the ground. Okay, Bullet, I'll take him now. No, Roy, look out! This is between you and me, Jake. It's something I've looked forward to. Keep away, Rogers. I warned you. I killed one man, I'll kill you too. Roy staggers as Gollick plunges a giant fist into his stomach, then recovers, comes forward, his right arm smashing at Gollick's jaw once, twice, three times. Gollick is shaken. It won't work, Rogers. I'll kill you. He comes forward again, slashing at Roy. He plants a solid, awful blow at the back of Roy's neck. Roy drops to his knees. Gollick steps forward, ready for the finish, and the finish comes. Roy leaps to his feet. His left arm whips out. Gollick is hit on the jaw. His head snaps back. Roy's right arm buries itself deep in Gollick's midsection. Once, then again. Gollick is falling backward. Roy leaps toward him, planting a left solidly in the giant boxer's jaw. Gollick is down. The killer lies on the ground, unconscious. Come over and get him, Sheriff. He's all yours. Good boy, Bullet. You helped a lot. I wanted to do it the rest of it myself. Boy, that was a tough one. Are you all right? Yeah. We've got the whole crowd. The ranchers won't have any more trouble with their cattle drives. Not as far as the night riders are concerned, anyhow. Say, Jonah. Eh? I almost wish I'd let you take Gollick the way you wanted to. Yeah. Like uh, General Rowe took Chief Wrinkle Meat, you mean? Yeah. He didn't finish telling us about that. Well, now, I think you said General Rowe put out his hand to Chief Wrinkle Meat in a gesture of friendship. Yeah, sure. yeah, well, well, sure, the chief spurned the hand, and he turned his back. <laughs> and that caused the general to bile over. <laughs> oh, Dad, right. He got so mad, he gave the chief a good old swift kick. Oh, great. Well, like I said, General Rowe had a saber down his pant leg. And when he kicked, the saber got stuck in the chief, of course. <laughs> Well, that is all right. I say, say that was all right. But what wasn't all right was that the general couldn't get his leg down afterwards. Oh, fine. Yeah. Well, sir, the braves of the tribe surrounded him and had him halfway scalped for me and Corporal John Dumpy got there to save him. <laughs> Remember, I said the general lost part of his scalp. Uh, well, say, sir, Sheriff, he, uh, I, I think we'd better head these men towards town as soon as we can. I'm ready if you are, Roy. I'm ready for anything. I've just had my lesson on Indian fighting and... Even marching outlaws to jail would be a nice change. There will be peace in the valley for me. There will be peace in the valley for me There's no sadness No sorrow No trouble I see 
There'll be peace in the valley for me. Now I'm tired and I'm weary, but I must toil on till the Lord comes and calls me, calls me away. Where the morning is bright and the lamb is the light and the night is as fair as the day there will be peace in the valley for me there will be peace in the valley for me No sadness, no sorrow, no trouble I see. There'll be peace in the valley for me. There the bear will be gentle, the wolf will be tame, and the lion will lay down by the land. I'll be changed from this creature that I am. There will be peace in the valley for me. There will be peace in the valley for me. There's no sadness, no sorrow. No trouble I see. There'll be peace in the valley for me. Buckaroos, I want to talk to you on a very serious matter. Every day when I pick up the newspaper, I read about someone being hurt or killed in an accident. Once in a while, the accident happens to friends of mine. That's when it really hurts. Be careful when you cross the streets, will you? Look both ways before you step off of the curb and be sure no cars are coming. And be careful when you're riding your bicycles and when you're skating, be extra careful. You can have all the fun you want, but take just a minute to keep out of danger. I'll feel a lot easier if you'll promise to do that, and so will your mom and dad. Go ahead now and have fun. Just take a minute to keep out of danger, will you? That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling until then The Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by Post Serials, each week at this same time, with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Brush production transcribed, directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Charles Seal, and Bob Griffin. This is Art Ballinger, speaking for P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling until then Who cares about the clouds if we're together Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather Happy trails